One thing the TurboGrafx-16 is known for is great shooters. And this is even truer on the PC Engine in Japan, which had a lot of games that weren't released on the US counterpart. Personally, I'm a lot more interested in console-exclusive games than arcade ports, and one company that gave us a bunch of great PC Engine exclusives was Naxat. Naxat was a subsidiary of a larger company called Kaga Electronics, and the Naxat name was created by flipping around the name of another member in the Kaga group, Taxin. American gamers may be familiar with the name Taxin, as they published a number of NES games, including several by Kindle Imagine Develop like Logi Man and Barai Fighter. While Naxat also acted as a publisher sometimes, most notably for Compile's Spriggan games on the PC Engine, their in-house games did an excellent job of utilizing the PC Engine hardware. In fact, to fans of the console, the name Naxat may be one of the first that comes to mind. After the Hudson, of course. Now, some people may remember a video I did talking about how disappointed I was with Koryun, which was made by Naxat, and I stand by everything I said in that video. The good news is, they made a bunch of other games, many of which are totally awesome. And today, I'm going to take a look at three of their shooters for the PC Engine. Burning Angels, W Ring, and Psycho Chaser. Burning Angels is a vertically scrolling shooter and was actually the first Japanese HU card I ever owned. The instructions tell us that the evil Dr. Gengar is out to conquer the world with his army, the Black Impulse. His goons kidnap one of the world leaders building a plan to defeat him, Dr. Kaga, but luckily her younger sisters kept a plan for a super weapon and take to the skies to rescue their sister and save the world. Now that we know the history behind Naxat, it's clear the name Dr. Kaga isn't a coincidence. Burning Angels lets you choose from two characters with slightly different weapons. Asuka's plane shoots a wave, while Hitomi's plane shoots rings. There are other power-ups that appear sometimes, like missiles and helper ships that increase your firepower. You have a super weapon meter at the bottom of the screen that fills up as you collect star items, and once it fills about three quarters of the way, you can use it any time by holding select and pressing either button one or two. The button 1 version releases a powerful cannon, while button 2 turns you into a phoenix that makes you invincible. You can hover over enemies as the phoenix and deliver damage, which I've found to be even more powerful than the cannon, but if you're still hovering over an enemy the instant the effect wears off you'll take damage, so it's a bit of a gamble. Thankfully, this isn't a single hit death game. You have a life meter and can take a good 7 or 8 hits before dying and life refill items that give you a little bit of health back do appear from time to time. But don't let that fool you into thinking it's okay to take it easy and get sloppy, because in Burning Angels you have one life. And no continues. That's right, apparently this game was originally planned as a Master System release, because you'll have to get good enough to play through the whole thing in one shot if you hope to see the ending. But that isn't impossible by any means. There are only five levels, although each one has a mid-boss, so the game doesn't feel unreasonably short. Burning Angels requires a good bit of memorization. Boss patterns just start up immediately with no build-up, and there are enemies that attack from behind in some areas. I've found it to be about a 50-50 mix of memorization and reflexes needed to get through it. The graphics are effective, but nothing amazing. Most of the enemies are just standard mechanical-looking ships, with more big ships for the bosses. More than the visuals, this game shines in the sound department. Every stage song is really memorable and is exactly what you would expect for the setting of anime girls in high-powered jets. Also, every boss song is different, which is pretty extravagant for a shooter of this era. Most of my viewers know how important the music in a game is for me, and Burning Angels delivers big in this category. To put it bluntly, Burning Angels isn't the best of what the PC Engine has to offer. The hitbox is a little too big, and some bosses have effectively unavoidable patterns. You'll just have to make sure your super weapon is charged up when you fight them. But the challenge is just right, and with two unique planes and a selectable difficulty, it should provide you with plenty of playing time. Next, let's look at W Ring. While the name is written with the letter W, the Japanese actually reads Double Ring. But since we're speaking English, let's just read the W as W. The game takes place in the future, but apparently the calendar has reset, and it's now the year 1560. A new type of matter called NX05 has been discovered in the gaseous layer of Jupiter. 
Unfortunately, the research center extracting the NX-5 is attacked by an army of monsters named Zeku. In order to take back control of the NX-05, Earth sends off the spaceship Spirus to head for the base of the Zeku, the Synchrotron. Now that is some 90s storytelling. As for the actual gameplay, W-Ring is a horizontal shooter set in a sci-fi world. There are five different weapons to choose from, which correspond to the colors the power-up items cycle through. Taking the item when it's red will get you a sphere that falls your ship and acts as a shield. Yellow is missiles that shoot vertically. Blue is a piercing laser. Green is a ring beam. And purple is a three-way spread. Every weapon can be powered up several levels, and no matter which weapon you have, a ring surrounds your ship and will repel bullets that approach from above or below if it's positioned correctly. Every once in a while you can find a hidden item that will give you an alternate, possibly more powerful version of the weapon you're currently using. But in W-Ring, there are no bombs, so you can't cheat your way through tough sections. The game has seven levels that all have very distinct background artwork, which is definitely one of the game's strong points. Level 1 has an organic look, as if you are still on a planet that can foster life. Level 2 looks more like the environment an alien race would live in, or possibly the insides of a huge organism. Level 4 has wires and circuitry in the background as if you had been sucked into a computer program. You get the picture. Again, the background music does an excellent job of bringing the level themes to life and really matches the artwork. In level 3, there's rain in the background, and the song that goes with it is gloomy and foreboding. It's highly impressive how much thought was put into creating a convincing world. And just like Burning Angels, every boss has original music. One thing that's memorable about W-Ring is the existence of secret areas. If you find a hidden item with the letter EX on it and pick it up, you'll be transported to a different area for the remainder of the level. These hidden areas have a ton of power-ups but are a lot harder than the standard levels, and you'll still have to fight the boss at the end. That's quite a lot of content for one 16-bit shooter. The one problem with W-Ring is that it's pretty easy up until level 6, which suddenly becomes extremely hard and claustrophobic. And even if you manage to beat it, level 7 is way harder. It requires learning some very fast enemy attack patterns, and if you die and continue, you'll have to play through level 6 again. That can be seriously discouraging. On the one hand, W-Ring seems pretty standard in its gameplay. There are no unique weapon ideas or attack methods. The enemies just shoot bullets or lasers, and most of the bosses can be defeated in mere seconds. It's the combination of great graphics, music, speed, variety in enemy design, and the feeling of traveling through an alternate universe that make it a worthy shooter. The last game I'll look at in this video is Psycho Chaser. Badass name, badass cover art. First, check out the background story from the instructions. The game takes place in the year X2981Y, whatever that means. The Kingdom of Nishigawa R, which is clearly an inside joke that I have no point of reference for, creates a race of androids called the Aura. These androids turn against their creators and wage war against humans, driving them underground. Their final hope is the ultimate battle android called Psycho Chaser, who they send into the stronghold of the Aura. We built robots that nearly destroyed our civilization. How will we fix it? Build more robots. Psycho Chaser is a vertically scrolling shooter in which you control a slowly walking robot across six stages. The artwork is pretty much what you would expect from a shooter of this setting, with inorganic worlds that alternate between mechanical battlegrounds and the insides of an alien, probably. The music also has a sort of mechanical military theme going on and does a perfect job of building the atmosphere. It's dark, but hopeful. The most notable thing about Psycho Chaser, however, is the weapon system. Your character starts out with four weapons that you can switch between at will with the second button. A standard shot that flies straight forward, a shot behind you, a ring that shoots to the side, and homing thunder. These weapons all start out at the weakest level, but by picking up power chips that appear after defeating enemies, you'll be able to power them up after each level. The more chips you've acquired, the more firepower you can add to the weapons, and you can choose which weapon you want to apply the chips to, similar to the leveling up system in Guardian Heroes for the Saturn. I love games that send enemies at you from a variety of angles and require you to use the right weapon in the right situation, so naturally, Psycho Chaser meshes with me. 
There are plenty of enemies that attack from the side or behind, so you've really got to be quick on the weapon select button and make sure you don't let yourself get backed into a corner. Even in the beginning when your weapons aren't powered up, as long as you're quick enough and know which weapon works best, you'll never feel that your skill set is insufficient. Psycho Chaser was made by a small group of only 5 or 6 people. I was shocked the first time I ever beat it and saw how skimpy the credits were. Due to the small development team, it's not extremely complex in enemy patterns or artwork, and some people may dismiss it as looking cheap at first. But the weapon system is truly complex for a PC Engine title, and I found the aesthetic world it builds to be convincing. Within the scope of retro gaming, none of the games I introduced today are extremely expensive. Burning Angels has been going for around $80 or so recently, so it's getting into the high end. But W Ring is only around $50 or $60, and Psycho Chaser is usually really cheap, like less than $20. So I can recommend them to anyone who enjoys games of this era. Thanks a lot for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, and check me out on social media to see obscure Japanese games. And I will see you next week.